I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com and let's say you walk into that Verizon store, you don't want to spend two or three hundred dollars for a 4G LTE device and you think, well, they don't have anything for me. Think again, my friends. Here's the LG Lucid. This thing is available as of yesterday on Verizon Wireless for $79.99 after a $50 mail-in rebate. Now, this thing is packing a 1.2 gigahertz dual-core Snapdragon processor, a 4-inch display, a 5-megapixel camera with 1080p HD video recording, and it's available in a sub-$100 price package, which is pretty cool given the fact that it has 4G LTE connectivity. Now, is this a device for you? Maybe you should go with the Pantech Breakout or maybe you should spend those extra hundred dollars and get the HTC Resound or the Samsung Galaxy Nexus. We'll find out in the full review. But first, special thanks to our friends at Best Buy Mobile for hooking us up with phones like this for use in our One Paul Bandit giveaway game, which we give to you on the site. When you go into Best Buy Mobile, you'll walk out working. They'll help you set up your email, your web, your contacts, your camera settings, all the stuff you need on this device to make it great out the door. Best Buy Mobile will help you set it up. Let's take a look at this now. LG Lucid. Let's take a look at the contacts application in part two because I want to show you the personal information management because hey, this is a review of the actual device, right? So we'll come in here to data, for example, pound data, and you can see, let's pretend this were contact. Pound data is my homeboy. We're gonna call this person. We talk on the regs. You know, this is my buddy. We're going to uh, come in here and take a look. So you've got the picture here, data, and then of course you can see it's stored to the phone. Now if you had a Google account or you had some sort of Exchange account, it would reference Exchange or Google up there. But you can see it's broken into three tabs, info, history, and photo. So if I talk to data on a regular basis, data and I were like, hey, let's catch up, let's grab a beer somewhere, it's gonna show up in history. It's gonna show calls and text messages here, any photos with data, and then of course the general info here. Now I can call the mobile. I have 96 as a shortcut, so I can press 96 in the dialer. And come in here, for example, you can see, and it's a speed dial number 96 data right there. So go back into contacts, go back to data, and then you've got your messaging shortcut, your call shortcut, and then of course the number listed below. Now if I had more information about data, it would be listed here, addresses, any sort of notes, any sort of birthdays, anniversaries, things like that. And of course I can favorite that contact if it's something or someone that I call on a, uh, on a regular basis. And you can see frequently called up here as well. So as that populates, you'll get you know your frequently called numbers up top and you can of course search and add from here. And then when I hit add, it's gonna offer me the ability to store it on the phone or through the actual account itself or on the, uh, the SIM card, the micro SIM card that's in this device. Verizon micro SIM card, by the way, it is not a mini SIM card. Or I should say not a regular SIM card. It is a micro SIM device, which Verizon's been kind of back and forth between using regular SIM cards and micro SIM cards. So that's uh, something that I found particularly interesting. So you've got Google Plus and Google Plus Messenger pre-installed. You have Google Talk as well on this device. And of course the Verizon stuff like I showed you. We'll scroll down to download. You can see Play Store because they did the Play Store update obviously after I opened the box. Quadrant Standard and Speed Test. So we're gonna load up Speed Test and take a look at Verizon's 4G LTE network. Now Verizon quotes five to 12 megabits per second on the download. They quote two to five megabits per second on the upload. Let's get this to a more accurate server, not Wichita. Let's wait for it to uh, locate me. And we may have to begin a test just to get it to identify where exactly I'm at. So we'll take a look there. So 4G LT connectivity here, relatively fast. I'm seeing some pretty decent speeds, although right now this is not what I'm used to seeing on Verizon's 4G LT. Let's get that number to go back up a little bit. Usually five to 12 megabits per second. I see speeds in the office between 10 and sometimes 20 megabits per second, depending on the time of day. But you can see that's well within uh, or I shouldn't say well within, but that's just barely within Verizon's uh, estimation for 4G LTE. So 5.67 megabits per second on the download, and then on the upload, we're looking at about four megabits per second. So kind of high on the upload, that's pretty good, given their, uh, their target mark that they're trying to hit with LTE. On the download, 5.47 megabits per second. And actually, I may need to turn on GPS. Let's go ahead and get this turned on. Uh, let's go into, do, 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 connect to, where is it, accessibility. And location, there we go. And let's turn these on, and that will probably help us identify an actual spot near Charlotte. So let's come back here and go to speed test. Now that we've got those turned on, as I was shooting, I saw the, uh, the lack of GPS up there in the top corner. So let's go back over here and let's get a local server. Takes a sweet time to identify. For whatever reason, it's not picking up that server. So let's skip and move on to something else because I want to show you this video feature. You get it's called Video Producer. You can create and edit HD videos right on the actual device. Let's go and find Video Producer and let's see. If there's an actual. It should be an application. I want to say it's an application directly on the device. Let's play around with this media. There it is, Video Producer. So let's shoot a, uh, a quick video and we'll come into camera 
and we'll do a video. Five megapixel camera, by the way. This is our focus on the camera, though. Instead of doing a typical picture, I'm going to do this. And let's go to, we'll take a picture of, or take a video of the outside. So we'll come in here and do a video. Let's just do a quick one. This is a test. This is a test. Here's the outside window. It's focusing in and blah, 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 blah. Phone dog is awesome. You should check it out. Phone dog.com. Phone dog.com slash rankings. Facebook. Twitter. Phone dog underscore Aaron. Hello. And that's a pretty sad video, but that's okay. It's saved on this. We're going to use the video producer now to edit this on the actual device. So we're going to go into video producer and see what we can do here. Add music preview. Okay, so you can come in here and do a lot of cool stuff. Add music. You can do clips. So let's say, let's see which video. Let's add an image or video. I don't know why it's not saying no image. Let's see videos. There we go. Let's do that. And hit that when we're done. So the video is in there. Let's add a style. Let's do a show reel. Let's, what else do we have? Let's show reel. I don't know why it's not allowing me to. Oh, converting. There we go. Making. Okay. And you can see my movie. Hey, that's pretty cool. Oh, that's, look at that. That's pretty cool. That's pretty neat. That's pretty unique. So you can see the quick shots. Apparently there's no audio in this particular one. Let's go ahead and add some music too. I don't have any music on the device, so that's probably why it's not gonna let me add music. But you can do the default and then you can come into the individual clips here and you can add some text. Let's say, this is pretty cool. Phone dog rocks. Oh, and the LG keyboard decided to force close. Add a note. Add a note. We're getting some real-time uh, testing here. You're really seeing how this device performs. I don't know why it's still not cooperating. So the keyboard is, uh, oh, there we go. Looks like the keyboard is having some issues, to say the least, but we'll just add that in there. Add a JDSM, JDSM, but you can see it's uh, having some device issues here. And then, of course, I can uh, click on this. Let's see what else we can do. Let's come in here. I have no idea. I haven't actually played with this. Looks like you can add like a watermark or something. We're going to go ahead and add that one. And then we're going to go back when we're done. Let's play this now. Let's see what it looks like using default music. Da, 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 da. Add a JDS in, da, 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 da. screenshot. I mean, our uh, watermark. That's a pretty nifty little feature. Video producer. And you could change all that stuff around, but obviously that's a quick look at video producer. And obviously the keyboard failed, so that's something to keep uh, be mindful of. Unfortunately, it looks like it's having some force close issues, which uh, happens quite often on a lot of these uh, mid-range to low high-end Android devices, unfortunately. Let's take a look at Quadrant Standard and load that up so you can see an idea of the speed tests. And let's bring that into play. Come on, information, run full benchmark. And we'll wait for this to run. Call quality has been relatively decent on this thing. Um, earpiece has been nice and loud. The speakerphone's been loud. I took it to a Verizon dead spot near the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. Uh, earlier, uh, when was it today? Friday, it was loud. yesterday afternoon that I took it up there. So Thursday afternoon. And uh, despite some chop, it, was, it did maintain the call. And I know I say that a lot, but it gets choppy. And actually, it cut out a couple of times to the point where I thought I was going to lose it, but I didn't. So Quadrant Standard's loading up right now. Let's take a look at the results here. We're going to proceed forward and see sending benchmark results. 2,425. So take it with a grain of salt. It is a performance. Uh, test. It's nothing to it'd be indicative of day-to-day -day performance, but 2425 for a high mid-range, low high-end device is pretty decent. So you can get this at Verizon Wireless for $79.99, and all in all, it brings some decent specs to the table. It's got 1080p HD video recording, and has a 1.2 gigahertz dual-core processor, Snapdragon processor at that, 4G LTE connectivity, a 1,700 milliamp hour battery. It's going to be a decent device for anybody either migrating to a smartphone for the first time, perhaps coming up from something else that you just don't want to spend 199 or 299 bucks on a smartphone. Perhaps you don't use your phone that much, or perhaps you don't need all the specs that come with you know, the Galaxy Nexus, for example, or the Resound. The Lucid is going to be a good device for you. And minus a few things like the LG user interface, which can be you know, obviously subjective, but give or take kind of wonky at times, and perhaps a uh, less than adequate battery, it's a pretty decent device all around. Much more coverage to come on PhoneDog.com with the LG Lucid, so keep it locked on the site. Be sure to like this, uh, like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash PhoneDog, and if you like, 
for your phone, you love it, you know, you absolutely love all the specs of it, cast your vote at phonedog.com slash rankings. Let us know why you like your phone, leave a review, and take part in Phone Dog's official smartphone rankings. Be sure to follow me on Twitter as well, phonedog underscore Aaron, and on Facebook at facebook.com slash phonedogab. Thanks so much for watching, and have a great weekend. We'll see you next time.